finally tonight, the campaign comment and the real danger when you run a presidential candidate who thinks he's Joe Sixpack the plumber and a vice presidential candidate who thinks she is Huey Long. It's not that the rhetoric in a desperate flailing last week on the stump can get hyperbolic and dangerous. It's that each person on that campaign hears some of the giddying hyperbolic and dangerous rhetoric and tries to top it. This has ended up, as it usually does, with one of the desperate candidates going so far to the right that they meet themselves coming back in the other direction. That'd be you, Governor Palin. You've finally done it. You've accused Obama of doing something wrong, of being something evil, something you boasted of doing and being yourself just two months ago. You try to figure out what this might have been while I go back and talk to those good people over there. The Republicans called Obama a neophyte, and then they picked a VP nominee with a tenth of Obama's experience. The Republicans called Obama a celebrity, and then they bought that nominee $150,000 in designer clothes. The Republican calls Obama a terrorist sympathizer, and then McCain said he was proud to be a friend of Gordon Liddy. It's like they've been unknowingly endowed with ESP and have been telling their own futures. And now the GOP has selected its last drum thump for the remainder of the campaign, Although they said that about the last 17 last drum thumps. Obama is a socialist. Missouri Congressman Todd Aiken speaking near St. Louis. This campaign in the next couple of weeks is about one thing. It's a referendum on socialism. Arizona Senator John McCain, who is apparently still running for president, at Dayton, Ohio yesterday. Barack the redistributor. Then he realized that sounded like an auto part. So John McCain at Pottsville, Pennsylvania, later yesterday, quote, Senator Obama is running to be redistributionist in chief. No, no, go back to the first one. N nobody you're talking to even understands what socialism means, Senator. Redistributionist is six syllables, and it sounds more like he's recycling newspapers or something. Go simpler, like Michelle Bachman's only rival for least stable member of the House of Representatives did. Steve King, R. Iowa, 5th District, but 17th century. Warming up a crowd at a high school in Sioux City for Governor Palin on Saturday. King, who, amazingly, is still let out of the House each day without adult supervision, said of the Obama candidacy, quote, when you take a lurch to the left, you end up in a totalitarian dictatorship. There is no freedom to the left. It's always to our side of the aisle. We choose freedom and liberty. Presumably, that's why the Congressman's party was good enough to torture prisoners, eavesdrop on Americans, suspend habeas corpus, demonize dissent, pay news organizations to run favorable stories, and generally come as close to a totalitarian dictatorship as any American president ever has. To choose freedom and liberty. For Congressman King and invited guests, not for the country. Can you tell I'm stalling? I mean, I'm trying to give Governor Palin over there a couple more seconds to figure out how she managed to get herself, as Shakespeare wrote of people destroyed by their own evil plans, hoist with her own petard. Got it yet, Gov? Okay, remember saying uh, that Senator Obama was telling J.T. Plummer that it would um, help the country to share the wealth, a sentiment with which anybody not receiving 150 grand in free clothing would probably agree? So you went off in Des Moines, you remember this? See, under a big government, more tax agenda, what you thought was yours would really start belonging to somebody else, to everybody else. If you thought your income, your property, your inventory, your investments were, were yours, no, they would really collectively belong to everybody. Higher taxes? More government misusing the power to tax leads to government moving into the role of some believing that government then has to take care of us. And government kind of moving into the role as the other half of our family making decisions for us. Now, they do this in other countries where the people are not free. So, Gov, uh, Obama's not just a socialist, not just a redistributionist, redistributor. Maybe not just a totalitarian, maybe not just a dictator, he may be a communist. To paraphrase you in Des Moines, Governor Obama wants to set up, unlike other candidates, collectively owning the resources by sharing that wealth and those resources. I mean, it's collectivist, sharing the wealth, socialist communism, I'd say. And still none of that sounds familiar to you, Governor? And Alaska, we're set up, unlike other states in the Union, where it's Collectively, Alaskans own the resources, so we share in the wealth when the development of those resources occurs. Who said that, Governor? Who was the collectivist share the wealther who was boasting to the reporter visiting from the New Yorker magazine of having been able to send a check for 1200 bucks to every man, woman, and child in the state since, quote, Alaska is sometimes described as America's socialist state because of its collective ownership of resources? 
Why, you said that, Governor. You're the share the wealth, collectivist, almost socialist governor, Governor, who also believes that income, property, inventory, and investments collectively belonging to everybody else leads to a misuse of power and government making decisions for us, turning countries into places where the people are not free. Places like Sarah Palin's America. Governor, all sorts of choice words apply here. Hypocrite, double talker, snake oil seller, socialist. Let me just stick with the one with which to bid you goodbye. You, Governor, are a fraud. That's Countdown for this, the 2008th day since the declaration of mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.